Matter of fact, before we go in, yeah, 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 back to the earth, back to the earth. Watch this video, do me a solid. Hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell. You said didn't Paul give a provision or give some stipulations or some instructions on a man or a woman leaving her husband, so forth and so on. Let me see where I want to start. Start at 10. Let's, let's see that. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 10. Uh -huh. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. So the first thing that Paul is addressing is those who know and understand God's commandments. So here he's saying, and unto the married I command, Yet not I, so Paul is saying, this is not my commandment, this is the Lord's commandment. This, and what does the Lord's commandment say? Let not the wife depart from her husband. That's always been the standard for an Israelite woman. Do not leave your husband. Okay. Oh, I, oh, I haven't finished that one. Oh, yeah. I haven't finished that one. Because like I said, that's for someone who knows and understands that they're Israelites and they've been applying them. But the, uh, Paul does give us some guidance, some wisdom for those who lived a lifestyle outside of God's laws and now they gotta correct themselves as they come into the truth, read. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put her away, his wife. Right, so the whole concept there is God hates divorce. If you need to separate from your husband for a short period of time, with the sole objective being to correct some type of issue, it doesn't need to be for an extended period of time, and it needs to be to reconcile. The whole point is to reconcile. The opposite that we experience today is brothers and sisters, they separate, they, they, uh, they separate themselves, but they never reconcile. They do it out of emotion, I'm upset, he said this, I don't like how he's doing that, he's telling me what to do, she did this. And all right, I'm just done with it. So I'm just walking out the house. That's not the re that's not the separation that God deems to be lawful. The but, yeah, God God doesn't give a stipulation that allows a woman to divorce her husband at all. Right. So going back. God. Right. Oh, okay. We're still getting there. Okay. All right. We're still getting there. We're working our way down. Read verse twelve. But to the rest speak, I not the Lord. Hold up. Read that part together. Don't pause into the comment. Okay. Yes, sir. But to the rest speak, I not. All right. So to the rest speak, I. So now Paul is saying, I'm speaking, not the Lord. I'm giving you some wisdom because I learned from the Lord, and I'm going to give you some wisdom. So now this is a difference. So we're talking about people who understood the law previously. So now check this out. Read that part again. But to the rest speak, I. Not the Lord. Uh -huh. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. All right, so this concept here is Paul, um, when you're in the Christian church, people like to go to Paul because they say Paul taught to who? To the Gentiles. To the Gentiles. Do you understand that the Gentiles are the Israelites? Right. Oh, you're talking about because we separated ourselves from God? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we started to live the lifestyle of Gentiles, God started to treat us as such. But this Bible, this New Testament, Paul's writings were never for any other nation of people. He was only writing to the Israelites that were scattered, that didn't understand they were Israelites. So like, for, for instance, my sister right here, let's say uh, three years ago, before you came into the understanding of who you are. If I was to ask you three years ago, what's your nationality? What would you have said? Foundational black American. A foundational black American. I never even heard of that before. <laughs> now you know what the biblical equivalent, but I'm sorry, let me backtrack. But now you understand that although you went by that term, that byword, by blood, by nationality, you are a what? Israelite. You are an Israelite. Right. So the same way that a uh, a true Jew, a biblical uh, Hebrew woman, a descendant of the 12 tribes of Israel, referred to herself as a foundational black African American woman, Negro woman. I understand they all mean the same thing, though. Descendant of an American enslaved. Right. But the same way that you referred to yourself as that byword, what do you think the biblical equivalent was? 
Gentile. Gentile. Corinthian. Ephesian. Galatian. Thessalonian. Colossian. Uh, Roman. All of these things represented our people who were under captivity to these other nations and we fell away from our heritage and our nationality. I'm going to give you one example. Go to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11. Uh -huh. Wherefore remember that ye being in the past Gentiles in the Wherefore remember that ye being in the time past in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcised. So the Bible says that in time past you were called Gentiles. If Gentiles represented my true nationality, how could I have been a Gentile but now I'm not a Gentile? You see that that concept wouldn't even make sense. Right. So when the scripture says that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, what are some things that you do with your flesh? Beat it. Huh? What are you talking about? Beat your flesh. Okay, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, so my flesh represents my attire. Okay. So in times past, I was a Gentile in my flesh, in my attire, right? Mm -hmm. I used to wear uh, I, I used to wear shirts with no fringes and border a blue one. Okay, so in time past, I was a Gentile in the flesh with some things that I did with my customs as far as the holidays that I celebrated. Mm -hmm. I celebrated what? Christmas, Christmas Easter. Easter, Thanksgiving. I thought that a new year yeah. began in the middle of winter on January 1st. That's how I was a Gentile in my flesh in time past. Keep reading. Who, who are called uncircumcised. So I was called the uncircumcision because the uncircumcision was the people that were referred to that did not keep God's law. They were God's people, but they didn't keep his laws. Read. By that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. Right, so those that were raised in God's laws were referred to as the circumcision. So those who were raised outside of God's laws, like the Galatians, Ephesians, Corinthians, they were referred to as, as the uncircumcision or the Gentiles. That's who Paul is writing to. Um, let me give you one more scripture to, to, to further that point. Go to Matthew chapter, what you got? Coming up? Okay, give me that Matthew 4. The, yeah, the uh, the Galilee of the, Gen G Galilee of the Gentiles. All right, we're going to trade them. All right, appreciate you, sir. Appreciate you. I want to give you one more scripture just to, just to clean up the conscience of our people to help them understand biblically the Gentiles that you read about in the New Testament are not other nations. You got what I want? The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 15. The land of Zebulun. Zebulon is one of the 12 tribes of Israel. You see it on that sign. Officer, help, help point out the tribes as we read them. So the land of Zebulon, read. And the land of Naphtali. And the land of Naphtali, another one of the 12 tribes of Israel, read. By the way of the sea, uh -huh. beyond Jordan, uh -huh. Galilee of the Gentiles. Galilee of the Gentiles. So the Bible is telling you that the people referred to as Gentiles was the tribe of Naphtali, the tribe of Zebulon, the northern kingdom of Israel. So biblically, now we have a better understanding that Paul's teachings was, wasn't for everybody. They were only for the Israelites. You got something? You was looking at something? Okay. All right, go back. We were in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I think we were at verse 12. So remember the point that I was making is that now Paul is teaching people who were raised as Galatians. They were raised outside of God's laws. They were raised celebrating Christmas. It might have been Saturnalia back then. They were raised celebrating uh, the God, the Greek God Janus. The, the New Year's is named after January 1st. So uh, when you imagine the difficulty of people who ate pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, celebrated all of these feast days, now imagine a married couple where one person understands that they're an Israelite, but the other person doesn't want to let go of pork. They don't want to let go of Saturnalia. They don't want to let go of the God Janus. What, what is that going to create between that husband and wife? Not agreement. Right, mm -hmm. right. Now that husband and wife are unequally yoked. Now you got one believer and you got one non-believer. So read verse, I think I want to verse 12 again. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12. So now do, do we have a better context of, of what Paul is speaking to, the situation that he's speaking to? I, I get that. I did question the fact that certain circumstances happen, but Paul doesn't really put clearly if 
the wife was abandoned for years, you right. know, and she was not supposed to get a divorce, but then she's supposed to have a covering over her in her household. Now that, that's a, that, that's that's assuming that now if that marriage was outside of the law, and now you've come into the truth, now that's null and void. Well, that's when I was a part of Christianity. Correct. So this is now saying for people who are not a part of Christianity, but they accepted their full Israelite. Absolutely. Background. That's what we read earlier in Second Corinthians 5 when it says old things are passed away. Mm -hmm. God didn't even look at that as a marriage. So should a person, and let me ask you, your uh, y'all's belief in baptism? Yeah, okay. we believe in baptism, but not in the way that Christianity teaches. Them. Okay, so okay. should a person who has been baptized be baptized, baptized in the format that yeah, under the under being an Israelite? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. It's still one point I want to hit in Corinthians. I'm going to go ahead and jump down to it so we can move on to the next point. I think I want verse 14 in 1 Corinthians 7. Where you at? Yeah, call the peace. Verse 15, verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, so if that relationship is now unequally yoked, if, it, if, it, uh, if that relationship ends, read, let him depart. Uh -huh. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. So when the scripture says that you're not under bondage, the Bible is saying that you're not under the bondage of God's laws to that relationship that wasn't established under God's laws. Right. That's the point that I was building up to. So when we read Corinthians earlier, 5 and 17, it says old things have passed away. That old relationship has passed away as well. Right. All right. So in your new relationship, under God's laws, a man must understand first and foremost that he can't abandon his wife. And that woman must understand that she can't divorce her husband. That that's a lifelong commitment before each other, the congregation, and the Most High God. All right? So you get a clean slate. So the good news is you get a clean slate. All right? And you get a chance to teach your daughters before they make that same mistake. This is the way that you need to follow. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.